everyone and welcome to Explore the Unknown. My name is Elizabeth and today is Nightmare Monday. And if you're new to our channel, please hit the like, subscribe, and the bell for more notifications. We upload Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for you guys. And today we are going to be talking about Ted Bundy was 1970s serial murderer, rapist, and necrophiliac. He was executed in Florida's electric chair in 1989. His case has since inspired many novels and films, including the new one on Netflix, Conversation with a Killer, the Ted Bundy Tapes. Ted's mom was Eleanor Louise Cowell, a 22-year-old and unmarried, was when she gave birth to her son, Ted. Ted's father, some say, may have been Lloyd Marshall, born in 1916, an Air Force veteran and a Penn State graduate. No one will ever really ever know the truth because Louise had taken it to her grave. 1951, Louise married Johnny Bundy. While Ted Bundy did take his name, he did report having no respect for his stepfather, some whom resented that he was too uneducated and a working class person. Johnny and Louise had several children together. Now, Ted was partially raised by his grandparents. Ted was born in Burlington, Vermont on November 24, 1946. From all appearances, Ted grew up in a confident, working class, loving family. About the age three, he became fascinated by knives, they say. A shy but bright child, Ted did have well in school, but not with his classmates. And as a teenager, a darker side of his true character started to emerge. Ted liked to peek into other people's windows. Yeah, a real peeping Tom. But nothing of stealing and taking other people's things. Ted fell in love with a beautiful, wealthy young woman from California. He first met Diane Edwards in the spring of 1967. She had everything that he wanted. She had money, she had class, she had influences. She was a beautiful dresser, beautiful girl, very personable. She had a nice car, great parents. He saw a woman that could be really a woman of his dreams. She was like no other girl he had ever seen before. At the time, Bundy was working menial, low-paying jobs, just enough to get through college. Well, he wasn't really sure what he wanted to do and what he was wanting to major in. He wasn't strong. He wasn't real masculine. And if she ever got, you know, if she ever got upset at him, he would just be apologetic and he'd be really weak. Ted believed his lack of money was a contribution of the factor of their relationship ending. It was at, at that point a long distance relationship. Diane had graduated in the University of Washington in 1968 and had moved to San Francisco for a job. I experienced any number of insecurities with Diane, he said. While he ended it with Diane in the because of their long distance relationship, she began writing less and less. He grew fear fearful of what she was doing with her time. I had this overwhelming feeling of rejection. Later that year, she had dumped him and Bundy was devastated. Diane Edwards got married and moved on with her life. He said soon he admitted that he began to desire to get some sort of revenge on Diane. At the point of their breakup, he wasn't enrolled in any school anymore, but he did re-enroll in University of Washington to study psychology. He appeared to be doing well. Many of Bundy's later victims did resemble Diane Edwards, very attractive students with long dark hair. 1969, Ted began a six-year relationship with Elizabeth Kendall, whom he met in a Seattle bar. Elizabeth was a single mom of, of a young, beautiful daughter named Molly. Bundy took care of them, and they said that he was warm, charming, and loving and caring. 1974, Elizabeth did start to suspect Bundy from, for, his, for the crimes, that she had questioned him about his odd behavior at home, like keeping a meat cleaver in his desk. He said he was just, he explained it as, as his charming old way, that it was just a tenderizing item for meat. 
Liz observed a hatchet under the seat of Ted's Volkswagen sometime during the summer of 1974. The hatchet had a pinkish leather cover. She still had fear that something was just not right. She secretly went to the police with her suspicions about Ted's involvement in the prominent local murders that she had heard about in the news, but they just dismissed it, saying he wasn't the killer they were looking for. But the pair still remained together, although they did grow distant and apart. There were two sides of Ted. One was a gentle, kind person, fun-loving, and the other was a murderer and a sadistic killer. January 1974, Ted Bundy's first known attack was an apartment of Karen Sparks, an 18-year-old. She was a University of Washington student. While she slept, he beat her before sexually assaulting her. Then he took a bed frame off of her bed and smashed her skull. Then he used the bed frame to smash it into her vagina and into her bladder. Her bladder was totally split. It took nearly 20 hours before her roommate, Bob, discovered her. He just assumed she was sleeping. Although she was in a coma for 10 days following that attack, she, su she did survive, but is living ever since with the permanent disabilities from that attack. The next victim was Linda Healy, 21-year-old, a senior at the University of Washington. He had saw her at a bar. He followed her home, and then he raped and strangled her. Over the next four months, young women of the Pacific Northwest started to go missing with no clues. Donna Manson, 19-year-old student of Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington, disappeared after leaving her dorm. Donna Manson's skeleton found in the foothills of Mount Rainier reportedly was wearing the similar shirt when she was last seen in 74. Bundy claims the responsibility for that murder. April 17, 1974, Susan Rancourt, 18, goes missing from Central Washington State College in Ellensburg. Witnesses say with the, his arm in a sling had seen a man asking for help to move boxes into a tanned Volkswagen Beetle. Rancourt's skull was later found on Taylor Mountain. May 6, 1974, Roberta Parks, age 22, had, was a student at Oregon State University in Corvallis, disappeared after going to meet friends at a coffee shop. Her skull was later found on Taylor Mountain as well. June 1, 1974, Brenda Ball, 22, is last seen talking to a man with an arm in a sling after leaving the bar in Burien, Washington. Her skull was later found on Taylor Mountain as well. June 11, 1974, University of Washington student Georgianne Hawkins, 18, goes missing while walking the one block between her boyfriend's dormitory and her sorority house. July 14, 1974, Janice Ott, 23, goes missing at Lake Schwamish State Park. She is last seen walking with a man with his left arm in a sling who approached other women that day asking for help moving a sailboat to his car from his car, a tan Volkswagen. Hmm. He told people his name was Ted. Later that afternoon, a 19-year-old, Denise Vassland, disappeared from the crowded beach area. People taking photos and videos of the park at that time of their disappearance police wanted to look at the footage to see if they could see what had happened to the girls people at the park said that they did remember ted and what he drove a vw bug they made a, a sketch of him when elizabeth saw in the news the sketch it did resemble ted she called the tip line anonymously and told them it was it looked like it was ted but they had over 3,000 tips coming in at that time. When the investigation intensified, Ted Bundy realized that he had to leave Seattle area. He had to find a new killing ground. He used the excuse to, of going to the Utah Law School, and Elizabeth and Molly would stay behind. 
12 hours later, into his driving to there, he had killed a hitchhiker in Idaho. He had killed four other women in the matter of weeks. Nancy Wilcox, a cheerleader who was originally listed as a runaway, last seen October 2nd, 1974, in a yellow Volkswagen driven by, you got it, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy confessed to her kidnapping, sexual assault, and murder. Her body has never been found. Melissa Ann Smith, October 18, 1974. Melissa Smith, 17, a daughter of Midvale, Utah's chief of police, said she was very, very cautious girl. Melissa had little of no fear for the small town community that she was part of. October 18th, Melissa had plans to attend a slumber party. She ended up walking to a local pizza parlor to console a friend who had had a quarrel with her boyfriend. After this, she, had, she was going to leave to go pick up her night clothes and go to the party. She never made it home. She never made it to the party. Battered and nude, nine days later, far from the small town that she'd grown up in, her head had been severely beaten with perhaps maybe a crowbar, and her body had been battered before death. She had been strangled, raped, and sodomized. Bundy did confess to her murder just shortly before his execution. Laura Ann Amy. On Halloween night, 17-year-old Laura Ann goes missing. She disappeared 25 miles north in Lehigh after leaving a cafe just after midnight. Her naked body was found by hikers nine miles to the northwest of American Folk Canyon on Thanksgiving Day. She had been beaten, raped, and sodomized, and strangled with a nylon stocking. February 8, 1974. But this woman did escape, and she was named Carol Ra Daraj said that he was a police officer and he told her that someone had broken into her car. She asked him to see his ID and he did show a badge, but she thought he just might be an off-duty police officer. So she went with him in his VW Bug. He drove to the side of an elementary school and then he stopped the car. And then he leaned over and he had handcuffs and he handcuffed her left wrist. She fought back and drew and then he drew a gun and he said that he was going to kill her. She then screamed, and then he could not get the Heather handcuff on her other wrist. She escaped, flagged down a car. They took her to the police station. She was an eyewitness that who survived and actually knows what Bundy looks like. She did give a sketch of what he looked like, and later the police posted it in the news. Deborah Jean Kent, the same day. She was 17. Deborah was last seen November 8, 1974, watching a play in Viewmont High School in Bountiful, Utah. She had left approximately 10.30 p.m. to pick up her brother from a nearby rustic roller rink. However, was never seen again. A key was found at the parking lot where she disappeared, matches the handcuff which Carol had been wearing when she escaped. In 1975, Elizabeth went to the police, this time with evidence and pictures, to help them ID Ted. In the winter of 1975, Ted went to Aspen, Colorado and found his next victim. January 12, 1975, Carol Campbell, a 23-year-old nurse, whom she was from Michigan, she was up there vacation with her family. She became missing, but 36 days later, they found her nude body three miles away on a snowbank. March 15th, 1975, two months later, he headed over to Vail and then ends up killing a 26-year-old ski instructor, Julie Cunningham. Denise Olveson, 24, of Grand Junction, Colorado, goes missing while riding her bike. April 6, 75, Denise Olverson set out on a bike ride from her home en route to her parents' house. The next day, a search party found her bike and her shoe under the 5th Street Bridge, near the railroad tracks. She was last seen wearing a green, long-sleeved Indian printed blouse and dark Levi pants. Authorities suspect that Denise was killed by a, the serial killer, Ted Bundy. 1989, days before his execution, Ted Bundy did tell investigators that he disposed of her body in the river about five miles west of the Grand Junction in Colorado. 
May 6, 1975, Lynette Don Cleaver, 12, goes missing from her junior high school in Pocatello, Idaho. Lynette was reportedly last seen in school, although certain details differ between sources. Some state that she left campus during lunch, others said that she was seen boarding a bus but she more likely disappeared involuntarily, based on her relationship with her family and her high grades. Ted Bundy did confess to her murdering her and dumping her body in the Snake River, but her remains have never been found. Bundy stated he raped and drowned Lynette in a hotel room after kidnapping her. He did provide some convincing details, yet authorities did not fully accept his account. She had disappeared mere three weeks before he was arrested. June 28, 1975. Susan Curtis, 15, goes missing, attending a youth group meeting in Brigham University of Provo, Utah. Bundy confessed to her murdering her before his execution. He claimed to have buried her along Highway Price, Utah. That same year in 75, in Utah, he had gotten stopped by a local cop. In his car, they started to investigate. They found a ski mask, handcuffs, and a pantyhose with his eyes cut out, among other things. Ted was arrested for kidnapping of the Carol. He was convicted and re received a 1 to 15 jail sentence. Ted escaped from prison twice in 1977. The first time, now, during the trip to the courthouse library, he jumped out the window and made his first escape. He was captured eight days later. In December, Bundy escaped the, from custody again. He climbed out of the hole he had made in the ceiling of his cell. Having dropped more than 30 pounds, he fit through that small opening. Authorities did not discover that Bundy was missing for 15 hours, giving the serial killer a big head start on the police. After Ted's second escape from prison, he eventually made it his way to Tallahassee, Florida. In the early morning hours on January 15, 1978, sometime between 3 and 3.15 in the morning, an intruder, later identified as Bundy, broke into Chai Omega House, carrying some sort of wooden club. He attacked four of the young female residents, killing two of them. He had killed Margaret Bowman, 21, and Janet Lisa Levi, 20, bludgeoned and strangled, wounded Karen Chandler, and she was down on the floor, and she was bleeding quite badly, from what they say, from the head injuries. Every bone in her face had been broken. She also had a broken arm. Kathy Klinger, her jaw was actually hanging off to one side, only one hinge was still attached. She was totally incoherent and in shock. Klinger later said that she remembered lying on the bed, trying to talk, to say something or just scream, but she couldn't. My jaw was broken in three places, she said. Blocks away from Ted, where Ted had broke into the house of Thomas, through the kitchen window, which was right next door to Cheryl's room. She was a dance major at the Florida State University. Like the Chi Omega victims, she suffered severe head injuries and was taken into the hospital in a coma. After she woke up, she realized her jaw was broken into two places, her shoulder was dislocated, and she had five skull fractures, leaving her permanently deaf in, one, in her left ear. On February 9th, Ted kidnapped and murdered a 12-year-old girl named Kimberly Leach. About two months after Kimberly went missing in April 78, her body was found. She had been murdered and assaulted. Kimberly Leach's decomposed body was found under a collapsing hog shed in Shawnee River State Park on April 7, 1978. Soil samples and leaves found in the stolen van led investigators to the spot. She had been sexually assaulted and beaten. These crimes marked the end of the murdering rampage. He was soon pulled over by the police again in February. The most damaging evidence connected Bunny to the Chi Omega murders was in Florida State University were bite marks on one of the bodies, which were the definite match to Ted's teeth.
Ted fought for his life. He was convicted and spent nine years on death row appealing his death sentence. In July 1979, Ted was convicted of two of the murders in Florida State University. He was given the death penalty twice. He received another death sentence in, for the 1980 murder of the 12-year-old Kimberly Leach. In February 1980, Ted married Carol Ann Boone. She was a mother of two whom he had dated before his initial arrest back in May in 74. In the courtroom during the penalty phase of his trial, he proposed to her and she accepted in the presence of the judge, making the marriage legitimate in Florida. The couple had met six years earlier when they had both worked at the Department of Emergency Services in Olympia, Washington. In 1982, Boone gave birth to a daughter. She had named her Rose, and she also named Bundy as the father. Not much known is about Rose today. She is off the radar. Ted Appeal tried to make his case to the U.S. Supreme Court, but was turned down. He also offered information on some of the unsolved murders to avoid the Florida's electric chair. He could not delay justice forever, however. Ted confessed to Elizabeth over the phone from his prison cell that he had tried to even kill her, and he couldn't just resist the impulses when he had felt his sickness building in him. Carol Ann then eventually realized Ted was guilty of the crimes. He started telling the investigators where he could find bodies and confessed to them all. He, she divorced him three years prior to his execution. Caroline stopped visiting Ted during the last two years of imprisonment. She did break ties with Ted for good. On July 24, 1989, Ted Bundy was executed around 7 in the morning at the Florida State Prison in the electric chair known as Old Sparky. Outside the prison, crowds cheered and held signs and even set off fireworks after Bundy's execution. Newscast, news crews were all there. Also, vendors selling t-shirts and tinkets for $5. Ted's body was cremated in Gainesville and no public ceremony was held. Before his execution, he did request his ashes to be scattered in the Cascade Mountains of Washington State where he had murdered the last four of his victims. I do hope that you enjoyed this episode of Ted Bundy. Uh, he was really a, a, just a mass murderer, serial killer. And please join us next Monday where I will have either mysteries or another murder case. Thank you so much for joining me today. You guys take care. Make sure to hit all the subscribe and all the buttons down below. Make sure to stay, you know, stay six feet apart, wear your mask, because we want COVID gone, but we don't want you guys gone. Thank you again for joining me today, and you all take care, and be safe out there. Bye!